We'll be recording. Okay. We'll be recording. Okay. You can go ahead, Brad. Yeah. Is it recording now? Yes, it's recording. Yeah. Okay. So, after a long time of uh, the interval in the Gemore, you must paint the Masechet Sota. This is a tractor that we are dealing with. And page 10 D. Two. Just to give to remind you a little bit of the background, maybe this Gemara is not is still more agadita, it's more uh, not alachic, but uh, some history and some of course everything has got uh, a lesson. But we finished with the story of uh, Judah and Tamar. And uh, we left in the, in the middle of this story, which we are going to continue. But just to refresh your memory, or rather to refresh my memory, because I found my memory is now too, too terrible. But uh, talking about Remember, Yehuda had two sons, and they died, and uh, the, they left. Uh, sorry, Rav. Um, I, 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 I just, according to what I can see, we've moved on from there. We are actually on the story with Esther going to King Achshashverosh. And we finished off last week where we find that Gabrielle moved the sign closer again so that she, so that Ahasuerus would in actual fact um, allow her to come in. So we finished with Tamar and Yehuda, according to my um, notes that I've made. I don't know. How you but if you want to go back, that's fine with me. No harm with that. Get up to it because I've got it. Uh, uh, I left the sign, and uh, the, 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 this is the talking. You are like jumping towards two pages. Whoa. Which, okay. page, which pages are you talking about? Yeah, mine is on, on the other one, but so it's, uh, it's fun. Which, which page are you interesting? Mine says 10b5, so I, I, I don't know. Then, Maybe 10b5. But I don't know what the other people think. It's, it's I might be wrong. You say 10b5? If you got the thing with Gabriel, then Gabriel came and moved the sign closer again. No, I think that's too far ahead of me. It was a mutual view done tomorrow. Okay, go back. Well, we can start the story with Tamar, but I don't think we got very far with it. There is a Gabriel in here. There is nothing what you are talking about, or whatever, Esther. It was Tamar, Tamar and the court case with Yehuda. I'll read what I... So this is what we are, not about Esther. You're not about Esther. Esther. Sorry, my mistake. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You die and come out. You yeah. In the middle. I just gave a, a, to remind, a reminder a little bit of the background. Yeah. What happened is that Tamar was left. Uh, uh, you, die, you die, the father, wouldn't let Tamar marry the third uh, son, lest they, you will die as well. So Tamar <clears throat> uh, made herself to be like a harlot, and uh, she, uh, Yudah didn't 
when he went, uh, he stood somewhere that Yehuda came to shear his uh, uh, sheep, and uh, he went to her, and he had a relationship with her without realizing that she is his daughter-in-law. And then it was uh, the uh, uh, Judah was told that his daughter-in-law is pregnant, and he said, "Then she must uh, uh, be died by by uh, to burn her to death." And uh, So we are uh, exactly that when she, uh, Gabriel, when, when she, he was, she didn't want, as we see in a minute, she didn't want to say, say straight away to Yuda that she's pregnant from him. Then, and uh, they, she was already taken out to be burned, and she sent to her father or to Judah the, the sign, the two things, when, when he had a relationship with her, he gave her uh, some things to like a, an obligation and afterwards he wanted to come and pay her and, and Sorry, I love, can, can I interrupt you can you just lift your screen we can't see your mouth you we can't, can't see you talking so we can only see your eyes so why that just mean that's, that's better yes thank you no 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 uh, rub it went down is that better? No, no. no it's you have to move it down a little bit. Just down a little. A little bit more. Even more. Yeah, that's good. Better, thank you. Sorry it's about much that. Better. Is it better? It's very good. Yes, it's better okay. now. Thank you. So, what happened? She sent him the... The, what do you call it? The uh, the, the signet ring and his staff. The, he left with a his sign, uh, a, a sign or something, a, 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 a ring or whatever, as a security that he will come and pay her. So this is what's called here the simanim, the identifying objects. And when he, and this is where the point where you said Gabriel and Samael, this is where we left. She sent, she didn't want to to disgrace him uh, publicly, so she didn't say, I am pregnant from you. She sent him the identifying object and then hoping that Yuda will admit, recognize and admit. So the Gemara says, and I'm talking now, at the end of 10b1, The last passage in 10b1, Amar Bilazar, Nachashem Sur Semanea, after her identifying objects were found, Ba Samael de Chakam, the angel Samael, came and distanced, distanced them from her, so she would be unable to send them to Yuda. Samael is considered to be the bad angel. So he didn't want that uh, Samael should, uh, that Tamar should be saved. According to the commentary, 
he wanted he didn't want that uh, David will be born and as we we'll see Tamar was like the woman that they had the same name of David but by Gabriel the Kirban Gabriel the good angel came and brought them close to her once again then and then that uh, there, therefore it was written that it was uh, found, it was found. Now we turn to 10b2, and then the Torah, the Gemara wants to relate the story to the possible. Alluding to what is written for the conductor regarding the distant done a distant dove of violence by David and Mikhtam. Amar Rabbi Yoda, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Nisash and Nitrachtu Semanea. The dove, in this verse, there is a reference to Tamar, for, for from the time that air identifying objects became distant, Naset Kyoena Ilemet, she became like a silent dove. This is how the more they want to learn into the verse and, con- and continue. What is the David Mikhtam is the continuation of the sentence? David Mikhtam, she had some men of David, she had Mach Betam Lakol. The more learned the, the word Mikhtam, Mach Betam Lakol, this verse discussing Tamar and in this frame because David who was under Hamburg, Mach, and to his perfect, perfect in his ways, which is time to old, descended from Tamar. So this is how to inter- inter- interpret the word Mikhtam. Other uh, interpretation, Dabar uh, Acher, another explanation, Mikhtam, that his organ that would normally require wounding was complete. In other words, that he did not need to have a brief. Shemulat Kshum Ha'ul. The David was born circumcised. Another explanation of the term, Mikhtam Kesher Shebekatnuto. Mikhtam means the just and his youth. He loyalty himself to someone greater than him in order to study Torah. Kach Bigdurato, so too he later in his greatness, he had the same that he always uh, behaved with uh, humility and uh, made himself humble towards uh, people who are greater in Torah than him. So this is what actually was still belongs to the last time. Now continuation, the same subject, and Yudas and Tamar, referring to the continuation in the in the text. The text says, V'yishal chayel chamiya le'emor v'yish asher ene lo anoch yara. She sent her father-in-law, saying, by the man to whom this belongs, I am pregnant. In other words, he sent the, the identifying object to uh, Yuda, and she took a risk. She didn't say to him straight, and that he took a risk that if Yuda will admit and recognize and admit, then she'll be saved. If he will prefer to ignore, then she would go, be put to death. So she was prepared, as we see in the more, in a minute. Because the Gemara asked, why did she have to send this object and not Tema Le Neymar? Let her simply said, why did she say straight? Uh, to tell you that, that he was the father of her child. 
I'm going to put you on this is interesting, very interesting uh, lesson. I'm going to put you on the Amarav. And the Amor Abba, Abkhina, who said it, Abkhina, Bidna, Abuin, the name of the Shimon Hasida, the Amor Abba, Rabbi Yochanan, the Amor Shimon Hasai, different there's a uh, different suggestion who are who was the one who said the following you know it became a very strong statement what is the statement listen to this <clears throat> it is better for a person he should cast himself into a fiery furnace then that he should shame his fellow in public. It is. That's a lesson that the, our Rebbe is saying that it's so, so terrible that if a person shames somebody he rather should let himself be burned in a furnace. And where do we learn it? We learn it from Tamar. This lesson we learn from Tamar. So the reason why Tamar did not say straight, I am pregnant from, uh, you know, it's, uh, a messenger came from Yuda to say, that uh, what's going on if he has to be burned she sent him back the message to the messenger i am pleading to the one to the one whom this object belongs so she took a great great uh, risk she didn't want to shame Yuda and to say, I am a pregnant being, and you are the father, this would be a big shame for Yuda. So she didn't want to say him. She sent this, the object, to say, uh, I am bringing it to the one who uh, was uh, objects belong. Akerna, please recognize to whom this seal uh, tunic and stuff belong. This was the object in, uh, objects identifying objects. Uh, just think about it. Our Tamar was prepared to be burned and, uh, and to save Judah from shame. Amar Chama Barab Hanina, the Aker Bifer Ladi, the word Aker, then uh, the word recognize Judah informed his father with Jacob about the alleged death of son Yosef. The story was that uh, when the brothers had the big uh, fight with uh, Yosef, jealousy, whatever, and they wanted to kill him, and from every story, they put him in a pit, and then uh, he was sold to the Egyptians, and uh, Yaakov, Jacob, was mourning for his son. He didn't know what to do, so they sent to, to Yaakov, they sent um, um, some of uh, his share uh, to whatever, and to and took his tunic and dipped it in the blood of his head, 
they took is to break up, to identify it, so that you would conclude that those that had been killed by a wild animal. So this was the verb, Akerna, recognize, recognize the tunic, that if your Etna that belongs to yourself, and the, the blood, so they, they cooked up a story that he was, um, was um, uh, killed by animals and so on. So the, the Gemara says, Ba'aker b'ser l'avi, the word there, Aker recognized this how Judah uh, tried to reconvince his father that Yosef Die, the Akel be slow, and the measure of measure, which we know there is Mida Kenegid Mida, a Kadosh Bohu who pays a measure for a measure. So the term recognize also that the world recognize. Baker be served in the same way that Judah was sending the tunic to the father and said, I cannot accept it, please recognize is this, is this the tunic of your son? Baker be served, with recognize, the world recognize, they informed him about his indiscretion as it stated, Akel Nalani, please recognize to whom this field unit is uh, serving of the Tamar. Tamar sent this uh, vegetarian object to Yuda, and she said, using the same verb, Akel recognize the same way as Yuda told Yaakov recognized by the tunic which is, uh, was stained with blood that this belongs to him. So therefore the same, the same uh, verb she used, Akerna, Tamar said, uh, sent to Yuda, please recognize. And what, why is it please? The Gnoll continues. Eina ela ashom bakasha. The word please in this con uh, context is nothing other than a term of appeal. Amrale, she said to the to Yuda, the bakasha im hakerna haker nei boracha. I beg of you, recognize the presence of your Creator. The Antarim and Hanemeni, and don't conceal your eyes from me. So, in other words, Tamar was uh, worried that Judah will not admit, and therefore she reminded him that Hashem knows what is in, in a person's heart. Rabbi. Yeah. We, we all know the law that if a husband dies uh, before his wife gives birth, his brother must marry her. So why didn't she say uh, to Jacob, your son has died? I must now marry uh, J Judah. Yeah, but uh, Judah um, didn't want, didn't, the, the Torah says that Judah didn't let his other son to marry her because he was young and he wanted uh, him to grow up and so took time and he was very reluctant to give it to, to the son because two sons died, he thought, because of Tamar, so he didn't, uh, he was worried 
that the Serb is not so good guy, and therefore he tried to, uh, how do you say, to, to uh, uh, escape from this responsibility to give it to Yuda. And uh, Tamar, she realized, so we see all this comes to tell us that there was a, a plan, a God's plan, that this is going to happen, as we see from the continuation of the story, that the Tamar eventually got pregnant from Judah, that King David will be a descendant from Judah. We don't understand God's way, but this is what the Gemara wants to bring about. What did, when she said to him, please recognize what was Judah's response? So Judah was um, brave enough and uh, didn't try to, to uh, deny Yuda recognized and he said, she is right, it is for me. And what does it mean for me? We see it more later that it is not Yuda that said it for me, that uh, it's like Hashem said, for me, this was my plan. As we see later, in the next page, a heavenly voice issued forth and said, Be many a two pushing for me, as these hidden things emanated. So let's continue with the, to finish this part. I the Dama of Hanil Bar Bizna, the Gemara said, There are two ways. Uh, the Gemara tried to compare two people, Yosef and Judah. Yosef also sanctified the name of Hashem by, by the way that uh, he managed to claim not to be seduced when he was uh, by uh, Potiphar. So he kept and he was prepared to suffer for to remain clean because the result was that she, the woman there, uh, Potiphar's wife, uh, wanted to have a relationship with him and he uh, ran away. He didn't tell her and then she built the whole story that he wanted, that he like, wanted to, to force her to have a relationship, and for that, Yosef was put in prison. So Yosef, Shikidesh Shem Shamayim Beshetah, Yosef sanctified the name of Hashem in seclusion. Zachabu, Sifulo, Atachan, Yitoshet, and Morchu, merited that they added for him one letter from the name of Hashem. Dichtiv Eyut Be Yehoseb Shmo. They put another letter, Hey, comes from the name of Hashem, and it's written, he made a testimony, this day, a testimony of Yuda, the Yosef name, is spelled with an extra of Hey. So this Yosef, now Yuda also sanctified of the name of Hashem by admitting that he was the one that made her pregnant, Zaha Venikra Kulor Shmosha Kazbohu, his merit was that he is called by the name of Hashem completely, but on the name of Hashem, Yehuda, 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 Yud K, Vav K, is the name of God. So this is what the Gemara wants to make a comparison between 
יוסף בן יהודה בבוז, אומר, בייבי, שהוא מביא, אקט אם יוסף ווי, even if it was determined to them. And then the Gemara continues to say, ביהודה ועוד אינם רבעות, כיוון שהודה ואמר צדקה ממני, וכן יהודה קונפס, ושהיא עזרה את מזמוני, יצאה בקור ואמרה, then every voice issued forth and said, הייתה יצאת תמר ושני בניה מנהו, יוסף תמר and her two sons from the fire, the two sons that she was bringing חייך שאני מציב בשבילך שלושה מבניך מנהו. השם להקמי בנות, אבו סייל עם יו מרי, בי אוף יו דסנדנס, אור פייר. מניו וורדיס דסנדנס, חנניה, מישאל ועזריה. חנניה, מישאל ועזריה, זאת אורס סטורי, אם תמצאי, אם זה נוט, ואם זה דרך חנניה, מישאל ועזריה, אם זה נוט, אם דניאל, אם בריב, נבוכדנצר, רקטג. a colossal golden image in the brain of Dura in order that all the horse made themselves before it and on pain of being cut into a fiery furnace. Chanea Mishal Nazaria refused and were cut in the furnace. They refused to uh, bow down to this and uh, they were thrown into the furnace and the sin uh, saved them from the fire. And the same, this is the reward, in the same way that you, Yuda, saved Tamar and her two sons not to be burned, I, the, the better to be, the three of you descendants, Hanani and Shalva Zarya, also uh, will be saved from uh, put into the burning fire. And this brings us to the next page. Yuda said, Tzadka Mimeni, she is right, it is for me. And the Gemara says, how did you know that I didn't know that, uh, that uh, it's for me? Maybe it is for me other gentlemen. The Gemara says, that Sabbat Kol Zabra, this is what I mentioned a minute ago. And the enemy voice came out, he should forth and said, Be many a truth machine. For me, even these hidden things emanated. So this was all Hashem's plan that this is going to happen. So what well, they ignore is the, the lesson that we are getting here. First of all, we might be very Uh, critical of Yudah to have a relationship with the harlot, which, uh, which was wrong, although that there is a way how to explain because the Jews in the Torah, there is a law that if a person died, his brother has to marry the widow. And this is what happened when the two sons The first guy to the second one married her as the widow. In the, in the olden time before Sinai, the idea of Ibum was not only to a brother-in-law, but it could also be to a father-in-law. So this is how Yuda actually uh, fulfilled by not notice even knowing that he will still be marrying uh, Tamar and every descendant which uh, eventually King David was one of his descendants and but the main main uh, comes to the, the lesson our person should be careful not to send somebody even if it means to risk his own life. And uh, this brings the story not completely, it's not yet finished. 
Ravi, we've only got uh, about two, two and a half minutes. So, so um, okay, we concluded this story, which concluded the only, the following will continue next week, that the Torah says that after this heaven, you die actually completely married there and continue to live with her with Samar. But so far, the lesson is quite clear about what happened with Tamar and Yuda. So with this, we will complete tonight, and I wish you good Shabbos, and uh, let's hope that we will have good news. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rav. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Good Shabbat Shalom. Shabbos. Shabbos, everyone. Shabbos, everyone. <laughs> Okay, I'm leaving. Yeah, thousand. Take care.